If you're looking for something sporty yet elegant and you're on a budget, you should definitely check out the Ebel Sports Classic. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Alex and in this video we're going to talk about the watch brand and a watch model I find very overlooked nowadays. And this brand had their heydays during the late 70s and 80s and was a huge hit worn by many celebrities, sportsmen, etc and they brought something interesting and refreshing to the industry back then. And I think they still offer a lot of bang for the buck considering what you can pick up these watches for right now. All right, so today we're talking about Ebel, Ebel, don't know how to pronounce it. I stick with Ebel for this video and please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Always strive to learn new things. This brand was founded back in 1911 and it's quite an old watch brand that has gone through a lot of different phases during the years. They had their heydays, their prime time during the late 70s and the 80s and also uh, for some time during the 90s. The brand Ebel was founded in Switzerland and we'll skip the part for the early years and go straight to the funky 70s and jump to the years when the integrated stainless steel sports watches were the bomb. The Ebel Sport Classic was introduced back in 1977 and it was a very cool watch at the time. It had a funky design, a very nice bracelet and I cannot emphasize how much I like this bracelet. It was powered by a quartz movement. They saw the opportunity to make a lot of money on quartz watches and they did. They developed their own quartz movement even that they also sold to Cartier and that Cartier used in their tank must line. And also during the 80s they evolved this Sport Classic line and added a chronograph and this specific chronograph was on the wrist of Don Johnson, also known as Sonny Crockett from Miami Vice, the hit TV show from the mid 80s. The success continued uh, through the 90s, but then eventually they sold the brand to the Movado Group. And since then they have lost much of uh, their charm or their presence at all on the market. But we'll skip the modern ages and stick to the 70s and 80s, which was a very interesting period for this brand. During my years in the industry, I tried to find something new and refreshing every now and then that people usually overlook. And in this case, the Ebel Sport Classic watches are, uh, in my eyes, very overlooked because I believe that they offer a lot of bang for the buck. Considering you can pick one up around six, seven hundred euros or US dollars uh, for the ones that I have uh, featured in this video today. They have also some funky chronographs with El Primero movements that are obviously a bit more expensive but still offer a lot of value for the money. I also recently picked up a world timer that I think looks really good. It's currently with the watchmaker for service so unfortunately not featured in the video but I'll probably make another video on that specific piece later on. So what I believe is interesting with these watches is that they offer a lot of nice aspects within a watch that I like. For a start, the case and bracelet is very nicely finished. It breathes uh, quality when you hold it in hand. It's very sleek and elegant. So the bracelet and the case, they are very sleek. Uh, the watch I have on my wrist today is the mid-size model. It's about 35 millimeters in diameter and about six millimeters thick, thanks to the quartz movement, of course. And uh, I also have another version that's a bit younger. It's from the 90s. It has a bit of a different case finish and bracelet finish. It's more of a polished, highly polished watch. I prefer the older ones that have a brushed case and bracelet with these gold details in between the links. And yeah, I mean, when I look at a watch, this one has a very distinct look to it. It has five screws around the bezel. It has a, a bit of a unusual case shape. It also has a integrated bracelet or at least the bracelet fits very nicely to the case but it's not integrated as by the book so to say. Also for the watches and why I believe they are interesting at this price point is that you have so many different versions of them. This one on my wrist has a matte gray dial with applied Roman numerals. The Salmon one has Gilgoshea finishing on the dial which is also very nice. Both are quartz watches 
Um, there are later ones with automatic movements as well, but I believe a lot of the charm is uh, with the pieces that have the quartz movements. I think you have to have one in hand. I can only do my best to try and provide you with my feelings towards the watch and what I like about it with this videography and photography. But I think that I was surprised a bit because I bought one on chance on an auction quite cheap just to try it out and then I uh, fell in love a bit like I did with the Cartier Santos in the past and I believe that quality wise they are quite similar and then the Santos which is similar in its appearance. It's a sporty watch from the late 70s, mid 80s. They, they share a lot of features and it's not by coincidence because as I mentioned earlier, Ebel uh, made the movements for the Cartier Quartz watches. They also helped out with the production of the watches they made with cases and bracelets during the 70s and 80s. And eventually even Cartier acquired Ebel uh, and their watchmaking factory, which later turned into their own watchmaking factory. I won't make this video too long. I just want to say that you should keep an eye out on these if you're looking for something sporty and elegant on a budget with a nice design. Uh, I really like this. I've been wearing this one for a couple of weeks now. I have a hard time actually taking it off the wrist. I just love how the bracelet, thanks to the many links, give this streamlined uh, feeling on the wrist. It sits very comfortably. And we even have a independent watchmaker that has been uh, very inspired by the design of this bracelet. I'm not mentioning any names, but you surely know which one I'm talking about. So yeah, for the money, for the value, this is the value proposition. If you want a neo vintage slash vintage watch, 70s, 80s design, funky stuff, quartz movement, slim. I love them. I think they, I hope at least that uh, Ebel will be great again sometime. I'm doing my best to shine some light on these pieces because I seriously think they offer a lot of bang for the buck. So yeah, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the brand and the Sport Classic model in particular. They have produced many cool watches in the past. Let me know if you think this brand can make somewhat uh, the same journey as Cartier made the last couple of years. I mean, four or five years ago, a Santos was about 1500 euros or US dollars. Now they are like uh, triple that. Is Ebel a potential uh, rising star in the vintage market as Cartier? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.